Hey guys, Extrasify here. Welcome back to another gold making video. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over my top 10 character parking gold farms. Basically, any areas where you can just park any of your alts and make some easy passive gold just by logging in, doing a thing or two, and logging out in just a couple minutes. One more thing I would like to add before we get into this video is that this video is in no particular order. These are not my top 10, whereas number 10 is the worst and number one is the best. It's totally subjective to your realms as well, so just take that in mind. This list is just more like a compilation and not really a ranking. All right, guys, so at number 10, we have Doom Lord Kazakh here in the Throne of Kill Jaden in Hellfire Peninsula. He is a world boss that spawns right on this platform every about four to eight hours or so. So basically just log in once or twice a day. And what you can get from him is basically a few hundred gold in raw gold. You also get two to five primal shadow based on RNG. And then you get any of these two BUE epic world drops. Now the main ones you want to go for is obviously the Exodar Life Staff, the Hope Ender. But as you can see, the weapons are some of the best. Um, this one going for nearly 50k region wide. But overall you have a lot of great transmog between 5 and 10k. That is just really really nice to have on your auction house. All right, and coming in next on the list at number nine is for Doomwalker. Now this is very similar to Doomlord Kazakh. Just wanted to kind of put these together in the list, but we are now still in Outlands, obviously, but we are down here in Shadow Moon Valley, right in front of the Black Temple. Now, same as Doomlord Kazakh, this boss has a four to eight hour respawn timer. And basically, he's basically a giant fell reaver kind of guy that just walks all around this front side over here. And same as Doomlord Kazakh, he drops two to five primals, this time the primal fire instead of primal shadow, which is a bit more expensive. And two of the epic BOEs that only drop from the boss. Now, the main thing we are after, obviously, is the weapon once again. The Ethereum Nexus Reaver, as it looks absolutely amazing. I mean, look at that. But other great items are the gun, the barrel blade long rifle. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. And he actually literally just spawns. So let's go ahead and kill him. So this is what he looks like. And there we go. We got 50 gold. We got high roll. We got five primal fires and the barrel blade long rifle and the face guard of endless watch. So just like that, go ahead and mail it off and rinse and repeat. And coming in at number eight, we have the Hosen Peace Pipe. Now this is dropped by an NPC. As you can see, we are in Pandaria in the Kunlai Summit. Basically, come on over right to the left side of the Shah of Anger world boss. And we're going to be going over to this little arena, the Coda Peak. Basically looking for a monkey rare spawn named Scritch. Now I've made a video on this in the past, uh, about maybe a year ago or so. So I figured I'd want to re-highlight this. But basically Scritch has about a two hour respawn and he spawns in any of these little hidey holes here. So basically this one or any of the ones around the edges as we can see. There's a few of them. There's about three or four, so he can be in here, and he can be over here. So I guess, yeah, about three of them. And he has about a 12% chance to drop the Hosen Peace Pipe. Now, for whatever reason, the Hosen Peace Pipe sells on the region-wide auction house. So as you can tell, there is an absolute ton of them that would sell every single day, as the region average daily sold is over 16 of these. Now what this does is it increases the reputation with all Pandarian factions by 1000. Any reputation buffs, it would obviously get multiplied. But as you can obviously tell, this is a very highly in demand item for anyone wanting to get old school mounts, patterns, transmogs, anything like that. And this is the only way that you can get these. Coming in at number 7 is Dr. Weevil. Now this is a pretty popular login logout for any alts. Basically, if you don't know, we are farming for the toy, the Big Red Raygun. I currently have two of these as this is one of my favorite farms to do. 
basically you want to head over to Theramore, over to the Alcaz Island, and basically there will be this rare spawn inside this little, well, this main hut over here. And he has about an eight minute respawn timer. Basically, he is just a kill, and he's pretty darn easy to kill. I'm a little lower level on this character, so it's not an instant kill. But nevertheless, you have a 3% chance to get the toy. And we didn't get it that time. But as you can see, it goes for about 10,000 on my realm. But as you can see, it goes for about 10,000 on my realm, and it has a region value of right around 25,000 gold. This is one of my favorite farms to do, and it's super easy as you can do it over and over and over, as this guy has about an 8 minute respawn timer. Coming in at number 6, we have the Lanticore Spawnling. Now this is a battle pet that you can farm once a day in a dungeon on heroic difficulty, and it only takes about 5 minutes to clear the dungeon. I basically just keep this character here each and every day, run it once, and hope I get the battle pet. As you can see, it's quite expensive, but essentially we're just coming into Blackrock Mountain and going to set the dungeon to Heroic and running Upper Blackrock Spire, which is this dungeon on the top left. You also want to make sure it is the Warlords of Draenor version. If you have the vanilla version of it, that is not how you get the Lanticore, so make sure once you set it to Heroic, it will make it the Warlord of Draenor, as long as you're high enough level. It's very straightforward, just go ahead and clear the first room here, and then go past this area to get to the first boss. Once you go ahead and kill the first boss, you will have the chance of the Lanticore Rare Spawn, which is about a 10% spawn per dungeon, so you only get a 10% chance each day. But if the rare spawn is up, that means you are guaranteed the battle pet as it has a 100% drop chance. This part is a little annoying as you have to go ahead and click on each of these conduits. The first time I did this, it took me a little while to figure out how to get the first boss to spawn. But once you go ahead and click all these conduits, then he will go ahead and spawn for you. As you can see, and we just kill him like that. Then this door opens and we check if the Lanticore is up. Basically, it would be somewhere in this room here. It does not look like we got lucky, but that's how it usually goes. Usually it would be on this side over here, or it would be on this side. But we didn't get lucky. I just want to quickly mention, if you guys enjoy the content, make sure that you like the video. And if you like my content, go ahead and subscribe and check out my other gold making videos. I really, really appreciate you guys. All right, and for number five and as well as number four, we're going to be taking a look at a few zones that have some rare spawns with some quite unique loot. Now for number five, we are in Duskwood and make sure to get the rare scanner add-on as it will pull up all of the rare spawns in each zone. But the rare spawns I want to talk about are Marina de Cirrus, which drops a one-handed mace. We have Lupos. We have Fenros, we have Nefaru, and we have Naraxis. Now all of these drop some unique loot and everything on the maps. All these dots are the entire walking paths for these rares. So like Fenros and Lupos, these are two wolves that path back and forth to these areas. Whereas Naraxis, Nefaru are in like caves, so those are easy to find obviously. And then Marina de Cirrus is right around here. Now they each have about an hour to two hour respawn, so let's get into the loot that they drop. So Lupos has a small chance of dropping the Nightbane Staff, which is absolutely insane value. It is a unique item. It also drops the Hide of Lupos, which is not nearly as cool as it's not a unique item. Naraxis has a chance of dropping the Husk of Naraxis, which is a unique chest piece for male. Looks pretty cool as well as dropping the Naraxis' Fang. Now, I recently sold one of these, but right now they're about 50,000 gold. Then next up we have the Tribal Warg Helm. I sold this one a while ago, but it's currently 80k on my auction house. It is a unique item, and this drops off of Fenros. Fenros also has a chance of dropping the Ravenwood Bow, 
which looks really cool in my opinion as it's a unique item and it's worth almost 100,000 gold. Marina de Cirrus has a chance to drop this unique mace worth a little over 70k region wide. Uh, my realm's a bit high, about 100,000. Looks kind of plain, but it is a unique appearance, so collectors will want it. And then lastly, Nefaru has a chance of dropping these awesome Beast Walker robes. Once again, they are unique in their robes, so they will sell pretty quickly. Alright, and tying in with number 5, number 4, we have Westfall Rares. Now, these are pretty similar to Duskwood. Basically, every rare that you see on the map that I'm showing at the bottom of the screen, these are rares that you want to kill. Same with Duskwood, as they have a lot of items that are unique drops to them, and a lot of these transmogs are actually unique appearances. So let's get into the loot. So firstly, we're going to want to go ahead and look at Voltross's loot. Now they drop a Talon of Voltross, which is not that great of a dagger, and a Feathered Cape, which is also not super great. So Voltross, not the best. Then we have the Rare Spawn Master Digger all the way at the back of the cave can drop a Rock Chipper. And Master Digger can also drop a Burrowing Shovel, which is actually what you really want to get from that one. So one great one and one decent one. And then we have the Murloc Slark, who runs along the top of Westfall. He can drop the Slark Skin, which is a male chess piece. He can also drop the Slark Hide, which is also a male chess piece. And each of these have a very high price. So if you get either of those, it's definitely a win. And then we have the Murloc Brack, who runs along the left side of Westfall's coast. He drops the Bri Privateer's Cape, and then he also drops the Coral Claymore and the Brack Claw. Each of these are very nice, so if you get any of those three, you are definitely going to be excited. Following on to that and to some of the very expensive loot, we have Sergeant Brashclaw, who is a knoll at the bottom of Westfall. He can drop the Brashclaw's Skewer, which is a unique appearance sword, and he can also drop the Brashclaw's Chopper, which is a almost unique appearance. It shares appearance with one other item. Following that, we have the Brainwashed Noble, who can actually drop the Staff of Nobles, which is a unique appearance. And then we have Leprethus, I hope I'm saying that right, who drops a unique appearance, Ghoul Fingers, Leather Hands, for a very, very high price. And he also drops the Ghoul Fang, which has an absolutely ridiculous region price. And lastly, we have the Faux Reaper 4000, who can drop the Scarecrow Trousers. Now these are absolutely insanely overpriced. Overall, these rares have about a 2-4 to four hour respawn, a little bit longer than Duskwood, but the prices of the items, in my opinion, are worth quite a bit more, so it's kind of a risk versus reward. But either way, it takes about 5 minutes to do a lap of Westfall. Make sure that you're in war mode to reduce the competition and of any people that may be just leveling and killing rares whenever they're up. But regardless, good luck if you give this one a try. Alright, and coming in at number 3, we have Scale Belly in the Stranglethorn Vale. Now, this is an absolutely iconic rare that was out of the game forever, but recently reintroduced. And with that returns the ever iconic Chromatic Sword. Now, this is obviously iconic because of its rainbow glow, and it only drops off of the rare Scale Belly in Southern Stranglethorn Vale. As you can see, it is an absolutely insane price, and it has a pretty good sale rate considering how expensive the item is. Now the mob has about a 1-2% to drop chance, according to Wowhead, of getting the Chromatic Sword, and he's in the back of this cave down in the Cape of Stranglethorn, right here, the Crystal Vale Mine. So make sure you're in war mode, of course, to increase the odds of him being up. But it doesn't look like he's up at the moment, unfortunately. So like I said, he would spawn basically right up on this middle rock area where this guy is. And the respawn is a bit unclear, but it sounds like he's only killed a few times a day. 
So probably about four to six hours would be my best guesstimate as to how often the respawn is. So make sure to park an alt here and good luck with the sword. All right, and coming in at number two, we have the Sealed Tome of Lost Legion. Now this basically drops off of any of the rares on the Isle of Thunder. This is a very well-known gold farm and a lot of people do it. As you can just park a warlock here, go around the island killing everything once per day. Going around and killing all of the rares once a day. I recommend obviously being on war mode as it will greatly help with the competition. But as you can see, you just kill any of the rare spawns as a warlock only. This is a warlock only gold farm. And you have a 2% chance per rare to get the sealed tome of lost legion. So we didn't get it that time, but let me go to the auction house real quickly. Now, as you can tell, probably I'm on a class trial just to demonstrate this farm as I don't really do it myself because the sealed tome of lost legion is quite cheap on my realm. But region wide, it's about 10 to 15,000 gold each, and it's not really hard to get some of these. Basically, the tome turns a warlock's fire spells into a fell energy, like green fire, so it looks really cool. So, as you can see, the sale rate is pretty solid, and overall, it's just an easy item to farm up, and it sells for a good chunk of gold. All right, guys, and coming in at the number one spot is one of my favorites. Now, I've highlighted this vendor spot in the past. If you don't know where we are, we are in the Storm Spire in Outland Netherstorm. Basically, come on over here, and there are quite a few vendors we want to hit up. So the first vendor we want to hit up is Dealer Najib. Now, he sells a lot of great limited time items. Now, I'm in war mode. One thing to note, that changes the vendor. Because I found that quite a few people are here on non-war mode. So I figure to park a character here in war mode helps with getting items. But as you can see, he sells a whole heap of great engineering supplies. These handful of fell iron bolts that sell for 33 gold each. For 57 silver, I'll buy those. And these elemental blasting powders as well are really nice. He also sells things like the adamantite frames and a whole heap of all of the outland emotes. So he's got two mode of light and three earth. So he is the first great dealer, but let's head over to a couple other nice vendors. We'll go over to this side to dealer Rashad, who has some nice battle pets for sale. Now a lot of people know about these battle pets and they aren't great prices, but they're definitely not bad to have. So like I'll buy just a few of these and throw them on the auction house. And then lastly, we will head on over here to dealer J Jadian. I totally just butchered his name. But dealer Jadian has some nice transmog weapons and he also has a nice outland enchanting for executioner. So as you can see, the Ethereum phase spear is worth over a thousand region wide and on my auction house as well. And this one is always the most expensive as it looks really, really cool. The Ethereum Phase Blade. Now, as you can see, if you when you go up to the dealer, it will have it set for your class. Make sure to click this drop down and hit all so that it shows all weapons that you can purchase. But overall, Storm Spire is one of my absolute favorite spots to park an alt because you can always buy the materials and you have the transmog and as well as some of the battle pets so it's just a nice mix of all good vendor items all right so that concludes my top 10 alt parking five minute gold farms i really appreciate you guys if you watched until the end of this video sorry this video went on for a little while but i wanted to briefly but in depth describe each gold farm with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out all of my other gold making videos. And with that being said, make sure to like if you enjoyed and subscribe. Good luck with your auction house sales and I shall see you guys in my next gold making video.